What is up, everybody? Carlos Mencia here, and it is time for the Mencia Minutes. I shouldn't do it that way. It should be more like a rock, like a the Mencia Minutes. It's uh, where I take stories that happen during the week that I find funny or interesting, and I comment on them. That's what this is about. Us talking about real things, stupid things, goofy things, having fun, not feeling guilty because we're not hurting anybody. We're just talking about what really happened. So if you're into that, enjoy this. But more importantly, no, not more importantly, as important, no, not as important, less important, but important. Let everybody know we're doing these once a week, putting them out, having some fun. I am enjoying this, I hope you are too. And by the way, I'm also beginning the tour, uh, Houston. Mad, mad love. Those shows, best I've done in, you know what? Compared to the best I've ever done, best I've ever done comparable. So Houston, H-Town, I cannot wait to get back there. It was an amazing weekend. Love you so much. And for the rest of you, sorry you had to hear that little bromance that I got with that city. But it is time for the Mencia Minute, so let's get it started. I got to start off with a big congratulations and a shout out to the half a million people that made it in that tried to the University of Kentucky. You got a letter saying that you're in. Way to go. Dad, Dad, that was a mistake and 24 hours later they sent an apology to every single one of them. So half a million students got told that they got in, and then 24 hours later they got told, no, you're not in? Oh, how many people actually got in? 36 people. Way to go, 36 people! Congratulations, 36 people! And to the 409, <laughs> I can't even do the math, up to almost a half a million of you, you didn't make it. Oops. Okay, so I keep reading all this stuff on how to work out, how to build biceps, how to build your chest. Recent one is, you don't need any weights, just do these push-ups and you'll get in shape. No, 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 see, you guys are putting the, 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 the cart way before the horse. Do you understand what I'm saying? The engine not even in the car. Come on, the hooker not in the hotel. Look, look, I need baby steps, bro. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't, I can't do push-ups or pull-ups. That's the whole point right now. So get me to do, you know what I mean? First tell me like, walk to the refrigerator. Oh, but it's empty. Like, okay, now I'm getting, and then I can do push, stop with these do push-ups and sit-ups. And if I could do that, I wouldn't need you to tell me how to work out because it'd be thin, dumbass. Start with the slow for us, please. Start with the slow. Here's the difference. You know who can do push-ups? People that have pecs. Men that have pecs can do push-ups. Once men have titties, see these titties? Can't do push-ups. So start thinking about the fact that we have titties first and then guide us toward a better workout. Just saying. Let's connect that last story with this story. A bowler, a professional bowler, for the first time since 1991, right? That's if I'm not mistaken, 40 years on TV converted a 7-10 split. A 7-10 split! Do you understand how hard that is to do? And for all you people going, who the fuck is a 7-10 split? Who cares? See, that's my point, because bowling is for dudes with titties. That's my point. That's what we could do. See, that's how you should have started. Hey, start bowling and then get into it, and then we could do a push-up or a sit-up. You see my point? But that's why I'm celebrating a 7-10 split. Well, when I was in shape a long time ago, I still bowled, so, and I still bowl now but a 7-10 split. Dude, seriously. That's like the dude that's 5-2, maybe no, 5-4. Five, five, a guy that's 5-4, uh, weighs about 200 pounds, geeky, nerdy, lives in his basement, banging Demi Lovato. That's pretty much what that is right there. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you an analogy here. Are we clear? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's a 7 10 split. So the house takes up a bill to look into reparations of black people. Now, if you want to see one of the greatest, no, probably the best, best taken joke on this ever in history, go check out the Chappelle show 
where you see what happens if reparations occur. I'm not even going to get into that. That's just so fucking perfect. That's it. So go check that out. But that's not even the point. The point is, this is a great thing. Yes, and I know a lot of people are like, why repair? But can I just be honest as an American who's read our history, who lives in a big ass house, who has become, you know, let, let us not say wealthy, let's just say unbelievably comfortable because of the greatness of this country. But I understand the people that were stepped on in order to achieve what we've achieved as a country. And I personally, feel guilty about it. I do. I think we should give reparations to black people in some way, shape, or form. Figure out how to do it so that my guilt goes away. And I'm not even white. I can't imagine that white guilt. It just bears on your soul. How awesome would it be for that guilt to be gone for you to say, well, we gave you reparations. So, I mean, I don't know what else we could do. I can't feel bad forever. That would be great, because I know a lot of people say that now. Well, I can't feel bad forever. Motherfucker, you didn't do anything. You have to do something first. You have to be something nice. You have to give something in order to say, well, that's enough. You can't not give shit and then say that's enough. That's what a lot of you fucking people are doing. I'm saying we haven't given them anything. Let's give them something so I don't feel guilty not. Well, haven't we done enough already? We haven't done shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Let's do something first. And then you could say, I, I, I can't do no more. But you can't say I can't do no more when you haven't done shit. Oh, this next story connects with the other story, all right? So uh, Pete Buttigieg recently said, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically that the infrastructure of this country was built and founded on racism. Of course, that sounds absurd. Ah, but when you get into the numbers, guess what, you, especially in major cities and in bigger cities back in the day, when they were building freeways. Do you know why freeways aren't straight from one end to the other? You know why they usually curve? Even in cities that are flat? Because they only went through certain neighborhoods. Guess what neighborhoods that was? Guess what neighborhoods were the ones that they avoided building freeways in so that it wouldn't hurt the community? And guess what community got fucked? Guess what communities throughout the United States of America when these highways were and are being built in dem eminent domain was said to be like the reason we're doing this? Guess whose neighborhood was the one that had the freeway in it? Even if it was a nice ghetto neighborhood, you know that it was the poor people and the people of color. So there you go. How do you make up for that? Huh? How do you make up for the fact that we put a freeway through here 50, 60, 70 years ago, split up your neighborhood. Now it's not the same neighborhood. And now we got uh, gas stations and shit all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I'm saying. We have to do something right before we say we're done. We haven't done shit. Do you see what I'm saying? Freeways. You got damn freeway. The next time you're duck in traffic, think about that. I'm making this turn that should have been straight because we wanted to fuck over black people and make sure that rich white people didn't get fucked over. That's what happened. I'm, I'm just saying, let's give it some. As a human being, you know, you, you want to live an ideal life when, right, you just, you want everything to be ideal. It's why we love Disney. It's why we watch movies. The idealism behind it. You want a perfect ending and, I mean, I thought that uh, J-Lo and A-Rod, could it, could it have been any better? This is J-Lo, A-Rod, even their names before they met came together and now they're breaking up. They're breaking up. But wait, you know what that means? She's single. Hey guys, get in line. Because one of us is going to bang that. Yeah. It's on. The race is on. Who's going to be the winner? Could it be J-Lo and CeeLo? <laughs> I think it might. You like free stuff? Do you like free stuff? You do? Well, if you get your COVID shot, you can get some free stuff.
So here are some of the stuff that you can get for free. First of all, you can go to Staples and I think Office Depot and laminate your little card that lets everybody know that you got vaccinated in the first place for free. Free laminations, that's number one. Number two, So Good So You is gonna give you a free shot. No, not a shot, a shot of their uh, wheatgrass and good proteins and nice juices. Yeah, make you feel better about yourself. Hey, stop asking questions, God damn it, it's free. Number three, Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. Yeah, you know the ones that they do and the Takahashi or whatever that guy's name is and the other, yeah, guess what? You get a free hot dog but only at the original one. All the others, you can't. But if you live near the original Nathan's and you show up with a laminated card that you got for free at Staples, you get a free hot dog. And guess what else you can get? A free beer, baby, that's right. Sam Adams is gonna hook you up with a free beer as long as you get vaccinated, so there you go. Get vaccinated and you can get your shit laminated. Go get a hot dog and a beer for free. And now that you had your beer and your hot dog, you're gonna feel like shit. Boom, you're gonna get a shot of wheatgrass and feel better again. What, what? Well, finally, not Cosmopolitan, not something online. They legitimately asked women, what do you do during penile penetration to make it feel best for you. It is a question we men have been asking forever. What can we do to make you feel good, ladies? And they asked women from, I think, uh, 18 all the way to 93. So even a 93-year-old woman is like, by the way, if I'm gonna listen to anybody on how to play with their cooch, it's a 93-year-old. Because the 18-year-old has an experiment. I don't even want to say that. That just, just sounds disgusting. Let's go to 21-year-old, because that's just not even right. But when a when a young woman, you know, 21, right? It, she doesn't know. You don't, you don't know. 93? She knows. And the first one is angling. So here's the thing, guys. Angling is, best said is, when you're trying to get the right angle. And I know some of you are like, what, it's the same angle every time. No, 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 no. A, a lot of men's penises, when erect, some go up, some go down, some goes hell. Hell, I got a buddy, we call his the hook because it goes sideways. So th there's a way to do it. I don't know what your thing is, but angling is when you turn a little, she moves a little, and then she goes, that's the spot. Now, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here. Figure out the angle and then you do it. So all you gotta do is ask her, oh, oh, here's what you do. Hey babe, get on top, angle it, and where does it feel perfect? But don't just go, oh, oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. No, 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 no. Angling, brother, angling. The next one is shallowing. Sounds exactly what it's like. It's just, it's just shallow, shallow. You're going in the pool, but you're not diving in, you see? You're just putting your feet in the shallow. You understand what I'm saying? You're, you're prairie dogging. You're, oh, you're coming up, but you're just, you're just right here. This is right here. Not all the way, not all the way. It's like, oh, oh, you know what? You're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. That's what it is. That's what shallowing is. Knock, knock, knocking on. No, 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 no. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Whoa, right there, baby, right there. Shallowing, shallowing. Best way to shallow, she's on top. Hover, you get down there. Now this is only for men that can do push-ups and pull-ups. For the rest of us, I don't know if you're gonna have the energy for it, but then, there it is, shallowing, baby. I'm telling you what the women said. This is not my thing, this is their thing, shallowing. The next one is rocking, all right? That's the opposite of shallowing. In rocking, you're all the way in, but a part of your body, depending on your angling, is hitting that G-spot, baby, is hitting that clip. You see what I'm saying? You're not going, ba -ba -ba -ba. you're just in, oh, doo -doo. you're hitting it, ba -ba. you're hitting it. You know what it is? Instead of this, instead of this, that's it right here. Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da -da -da. There you go, but you're close, but you're close. You're in there, you're in there. You're fighting and you're in there. You're fighting and you're in there. That's it, it's the interior, it's right there. It's right there and you get it, and you get it, and you mush it, and you get it, and you get it. But you, now you got the angling, cause you know the angling. 
and you're rocking. You're rocking and angling. You're wrangling. Put it together, baby. Ooh, even I'm getting turned on. Even I'm getting turned on. But there's more. And the final tip is called pairing. Now this was the most important one because this is the one that a lot of guys have problems with, right? It is when uh, a woman usually guides you to use your fingers. While, by the way, this is all during penetration, right? To use your fingers outside while the penetration is inside, right? A lot of guys are, I know what I'm doing. I know how to get. This is not about you or your ego, bro. This is about them. So you're wrangling, right? You're wrangling. Oh, no, no. You know what? You can't wrangle because that one's close and that one's far, right? So you could be, you could do shallowing and pairing, shallowing and pairing, right? Shallowing and pairing. You could do rocking, but not rocking and pairing. But you could do, you could do, yeah, see, so mix it up all you want. But the pairing is the most important because this is when a woman says, you don't have to find my G spot. Let me guide your hand toward it and let me tell you exactly what to do. And ladies, this one's on you. You gotta tell us exactly how to do it. I don't know how you like it. Is it hot? Is it soft? Is it rubby? Is it on the outside? Do I pretend I'm an illegal immigrant but I don't want to cross? Or do I cross the border? I don't know. You got to tell us. But guys, this is what turns women on and makes them feel great. And you know who said so? A 93-year-old woman. What? And speaking of sex and scandals, I got to talk about Gates. Am I surprised and do I believe it? Let me just tell you this, okay? Not shocked when a conservative gets caught doing crazy things. It's actually pretty normal. If you talk to a professional, i.e. whatever you want to say, a prostitute hooker, they will all tell you that if they're travelers, they make way more money during the Republican convention than during the Democratic National Convention. Why? Because most people that are like, whatever, we'll do whatever, I'm cool. Those are the ones that, you know, when you go, hey, let's do this. No, that's a little much for me. But we could have sex or we could mess around. It's the ones that are, never do it, never do it, never say it, never do it. It's the dudes that are, you know, um, oh, I hate gays, I hate gays. You know why they hate gays? Because the minute they have two drinks, they want to suck a dick. That's why. And these other dudes, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. The minute they close, woohoo! Let's do some blow and some molly. And oh, do, am I shocked? Hell no. I've been saying this for years when it comes to pretty much everything, even serial killers. People that hold shit in will eventually explode. So, Matt Gates, you gotta learn how to uh, manage your explosions. So the U.S. Olympic uh, Committee, I guess, made a mistake because uh, they actually put on Twitter what uh, the U.S. Uh, team is going to wear during the closing ceremony of the Olympics coming up later this year. What do you think happened? What do you think happened? Do I need to finish this story? Do we know how bad it got? You know, of course, that it sucks, it's a piece of shit, it's horrible. I fucking love it. You know what they look like? They look like sailors, and I don't mean like sailor sailors. I mean like yachters. Fuck yeah, because that's the American dream, baby, to one day make enough money and live in a country where you can be on a boat sailing your ass off. Fuck yeah, that's America. You keep those goddamn uniforms. You keep them. And by the way, instead of playing whatever song you're going to play for USA, play Christopher Cross and sailing takes me away. To... Yes, yes. That's America, bitches. That's America. That's the dream. I want a yacht and those goddamn sweaters they're wearing. I love this next story because I talk about parenting and specifically shitty parenting all the time and parents that are afraid. Yeah, that's right. Most parents, especially in America, where we make a mistake is that we care too much about how our kids feel about us. Your kids are not supposed to understand you when they're young. They're supposed to understand you when they get older, okay? If you're a good parent, they're not going to like you. You said no. You said you can't do that. You gave them responsibilities. You know what this mother did? She told her kid, clean your room, and he said no, and she threw away the toys. What? That is the greatest thing I ever heard. 
that's like, I actually want to get mad at her for throwing the toys away. Like, cause my dumbass would have hid the toys, taught the lesson, and then brought them back. But she threw them away. Fuck yeah, man. That kid ain't getting his toys back and he learned his goddamn lesson. That is parenting 101. I just hope that they have enough money to replace some of the stuff because because i'm sure he's gonna start behaving well and then he's gonna deserve good stuff and then what you threw it away but hey you know who support you got this guy and i say my favorite favorite story for last i've been talking about for a while now how bad we in america have been treating asians because of all this COVID bullshit. The world is starting to do the same thing. It's horrible. But in the midst of all of that, can I celebrate that I love America and the things in it? And I love, 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 love the show Warrior. It's on HBO Max if you haven't seen it. It is based on the writings of Bruce Lee that he thought about when trying to create the show Kung Fu. So for you people that don't know, way back in the day, uh, Bruce Lee uh, and the producer of The Green Hornet, which he was a part of, created a TV show together called Kung Fu. But in the end, they didn't want to put an Asian guy, so they got uh, Carradine to play the part of an Asian guy because he kind of looked Asian, but he wasn't. And Hollywood didn't want to give a leading role to an actual Asian person. But now, this show is based on his writings and it is amazing. Just go watch it, it's lovely. And guess what, guess what? Season three, bitches! Season three! Yeah, I don't need an abacus to figure out that there's another season and it's season three, bitches! Woo! It's on, baby! Season three. I don't know how to say three in Chinese, but if I did, I would've said that. Hey, somebody let me know how you say three in Chinese. I just know how to say xi xian and some other stuff like that. And that, as they say, is a wrap, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mencia Minutes. And by the way, I uh, hope you enjoyed the scenery here. This is actually part of the backyard uh, at a home we have uh, up in uh, Roseburg, Oregon. Yeah, chill out here and uh, relax. And uh, this is part of the backyard. Deer come out there in the morning and in the twilight. It's badass. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. And by the way, Jacksonville, Florida. I will be coming to the Comedy Zone next weekend. So get your tickets. They're almost sold out. Uh, I love you, man. I appreciate you. You guys are the best. Keep telling everybody to come back. And I will see you next week. Okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>